everybody. Part three of Should I Share That Point of View? I've got a bunch of thoughts here, so in no particular order, but hopefully it'll be helpful. So again, we've got this quadrant here where they want to know one of your thoughts, but you don't want to share. We've got uh, they don't want to know it and you don't want to share it. You want to share it, but they don't really want to know. And of course, you want to share it and they want to hear it. You know, important to them, important to you. There we go. So I just wanted to, I talked about this, but I want to write it down here on the map, on this chart. The things that are important to them that they want to know, but you don't necessarily want to share. One of the ways you can deal with this is uh, other people's stories. So case studies, other examples from other people. Also, it's good to know that this can be sort of implicit, meaning you can write from an experience or about an experience, like without writing about your own personal experience, you can have your experience appear in the way that you write, meaning um, it, can sh the, it can show up in the, in the uh, tone in the, you write about the general experience and without ever revealing that you've gone through that, that exact same thing, people can feel it. Oh, this person gets it. They really understand. And people who've been through it can often pick up. They have a kind of a radar. They can say, I think this person's also had this experience, even though you don't explicitly say it, it can be implicit. Yeah. Um, the things here that you want to share, but they don't want to know, um, these may be just things you're into, points of view you have that are fascinating but not directly relevant, experiences you've had that are interesting but not directly relevant. These can kind of be a PS in your emails. You know, uh, in my newsletters, I often put a bit of music. I like music, so I share. Here's the tune of the week, and there's a little link to a YouTube video of, of a tune. But also this can be like a weekly or monthly social media post. You know, you can share stuff that isn't directly related to your business just once a week or something, but it adds a little bit of spice, a little variety. They may not be wanting to know it, but they might be delighted once they heard it. But what about here, the things that are what we want to share? Well, um, the uh, first of all stories i mean your own the, the more of your own stories you can share but any kind of stories that will convey this point of view very helpful also there's the show don't tell um the more you can have your point of view incarnated you know if for example if you have a point of view that it's important to be soft and gentle with ourselves then you're going to want to speak in a soft and gentle way in your videos. You may want soft and gentle music playing in the background, a soft and gentle background. You know, if you're talking about creating space in your life and your videos have clutter everywhere, you know, obviously uh, we're not going to follow it. There's some Instagram, Instagram accounts you follow just because of how they make you feel. Because whatever it is, this, this kind of feeling they're trying to convey... Uh, the videos, you know, it's such good lighting and, and um, they've put so much care into the presentation that it conveys something. It conveys some of the point of view without ever saying it. You can talk about how important beauty is or you can make beautiful content. More powerful if you show than if you tell. And, um, and then, of course... You want to share it, they want to hear it. Fundamentally, this is the point of view marketing. You know, we've got to make the case. So this is, you can just be sharing kind of evidence, which usually is in the form of stories anyways, yeah? Okay, but here are a few other thoughts I wanted to share. So there may be things that are important for them to know, right? They want to know about it, but you don't want to share it. Sometimes the reason we don't want to share it is it's um, going to rock the boat. And a general formulation I'd invite you to consider is that the more, un the, more, um, 
unsettling the download is for you, the more comforting it will be for other people. The more of a rude awakening it is for you, the more affirming it will probably be for other people. If you have a certain insight about the world that's unsettling for you, it means you're seeing something that's there. And that means other people have probably seen it or are aware of it, but maybe don't want to admit it. This is why rants are so powerful. When somebody finally goes on a rant, a lot of other people say, me too. I just didn't have the courage to say it. Or I, I, I had that feeling, but I hadn't put words to it. Thank you for putting words to it. So sometimes the reason we don't want to share it, right, is this just, God, that is a big thought that's really rattling me. Well, it's the, it's rattling other people who are having it, who haven't quite articulated as well as you have. It's kind of pre-conscious and it's rattling them right now. So when you share it, it will probably be deeply affirming. So that's one thing that's good to know. The other thing that's interesting to notice is this. When you don't want to share, now there's reasons you don't want to share things that are that make total sense. Again, it could be your safety, the safety of others, could be legal reasons you don't want to share certain things. But sometimes we don't want to share because it's just so unpopular. It's such a dangerous idea. It's going to get us canceled. But when I ask people, I say the thing that you're nervous to share, the thing that you're scared to share, yeah, the stuff in this column. Are you nervous to share it because you're scared the general public won't like it because your clients won't like it or because your colleagues won't like it. And almost always, this is about what would my colleagues say? Yeah, it's almost never the potential clients. I've just noticed that. What would my peers say? Oh my God, I'd lose my, my status in my community. Um, it's almost always the peers, not the potential clients. And I remember somebody asking me, said, how do I not alienate my potential clients by sharing my point of view? If you share your honest point of view and they are um, alienated by that, they're not your ideal clients. By definition, by definition, your ideal clients when there are things that are really important for you to share, that really matter for you, um, when you have a really honest insight and you share it, by definition, your ideal clients resonate with it. They're the ones who say, oh my God, me too. If they don't, they're just probably not your ideal clients. Okay, I think those are my main thoughts for part three that I wanted to add to this. Again, I would love to hear your thoughts on this, what this brings up for you. Um, it's a very new model, I'm not attached to it. Maybe you have ideas of other axes or different things that could go in these squares. Maybe this reminds you of other things you've seen in other places. Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Thanks so much.